Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning. <laughs> We've got a little tricky uh, technology going on this morning, so we're just um, going to keep the mindset that this is going to flow well today. So good morning and welcome to Center for Spiritual Awakening. My name is Colleen Gazelle, and I'm delighted you're all here today in the room. And also for those of you who are at home, thank you so much for joining us. And we like to start by standing and singing a beautiful song called In This Very Room. If you haven't been here before, the lyrics are on the monitors. Thank you, everyone. Our charismatic Reverend David Hayward is on vacation today. He'll be back next week. So today we have a wonderful new talk from a guest speaker, some incredible music, affirmative prayer treatments, and of course, circle group afterwards and treats in the community room. We like to begin with the children's church. And today, Reverend... Karen Shahade, newly Reverend Karen Shahade, has just a small little topic for the children. It's called universal consciousness. So let's give, let's give Karen a warm welcome. Good morning, everyone. Well, we've worked our way all through the chakras, and we're now to the final crown chakra. We're starting seven weeks on the crown. And so we're just going to launch right in with universal consciousness, that one knowing that myself, the knowledge I am, everything around me, all the thoughts I have are all part of the one. And it will take us a little while to explore that. And we'll use stories and song and prayer. And I'll start with a story from um, the Aboriginals about the rainbow serpent who first came into the world and created the world. And I have to share with you from the Radiant Sutras. Dreaming, dreaming, sleeping, awakening, rhythms of darkness and light, day and night, night and day, wondering, who am I? Who am I? Who is morphing through this ever-shifting flow? Beloved, wake up. Dance in your true body before time, shimmering energy without end. I welcome the children. If there are any newcomers to CSA, please raise your hand. We have a gift for you. Yes, okay. And my friend Tommy here will bring you a slip of paper. You can redeem your gift afterward in the lobby with Dr. Araya. 
Araya, and then you can go get a second gift in our mind shop down the hall. So thank you for coming. Glad you're here. Please silence your cell phones. That includes me, but I, I'm having, I got some technology stuff to do with Jody, so mine's going to stay on, but I hope you all turn your phones off this morning. Okay. We have a health treatment this morning by a gentleman named Reverend Craig Rothen, and he just became a reverend like last month, but he's been a practitioner for over 30 years. So he is going to get us all healthy this morning. So let's give a welcome to Craig Rothen, Reverend Craig Rothen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am who she said I was, Craig Rothen, <laughs> your health minister today. Uh, if you know uh, anyone who's challenged physically or mentally and would welcome our prayers, please raise your hand now. When I call on you, please say their name out loud. Anyone whose name is mentioned will be included in our treatment. Anyone? Dan. Joey and Jim and Judy and John. Thank you. Timothy. Thank you. The people of Ukraine. Thank you. Yes. Allison. Thank you. Yes. Crystal. Crystal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Paula. Thank you. Mita. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. Yes. 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 In the back row. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes? Thank you. So let's close our eyes, if you will, for just a moment and settle down into that place which is the source of all, that place of creative intelligence which is the creation itself, that place that we call God or goddess which is all-knowing, all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and his and her presence is here right now in this room. I speak my word right now for all those that have asked for prayer requests. And in addition, I speak my word for all the people of Ukraine, all of the all of the veterans, families who may have health issues. In this moment, with every cell, muscle, fiber, tissue, organ, in each and everybody's body, there's healing, wholeness, and health taking place as they are surrounded by the light the love and the power and the presence of God and goddess right now. This healing takes place as I speak these words and continues to take place after this prayer treatment for the next minute, hour, day, month, and throughout their entire life. I know this is so. It is done, and now I release these words to the universal law. Give it to God, who does the work. And together we say, and so it is. In the back of the sanctuary is our, is our prayer treatment request table. We invite you to write your name or the name of a loved one on a request slip and place it in the basket. 
I'll be taking those names home and providing prayer treatments for them all week. Much love to you and thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. We have a wonderful guest speaker live today. Her name is Dr. Carol Carnes. She's been a spiritual director at several Science of Mind centers. Dr. Carol is an outstanding teacher and speaker. Here's what Dr. Bill has to say about her. She teaches in a very clear way that everyone can understand and employ in their lives. Dr. Carol is also the author of Emerson and New Thought, which you can purchase in the Mind Shop and on Amazon. So let's welcome Dr. Carol Carnes. Carol, Dr. Carol. Dr. Dr. Carol, can you hear us? I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I, I'm so embarrassed to say I forgot to introduce our musician this morning who's going to perform before you speak. I, I apologize. We're, we're on new ground here, and, and it's a, yeah, so I apologize for that. Could you just hold just for a moment? Thank you. So we have a very talented vocalist here today. His name is Richard Bryant. <laughs> Richard has played with the Doobie Brothers, Little River Band, and the White Album Ensemble locally. Richard is a recording engineer and performs with the local band Two Rivers. We've heard from both the, both the rivers recently. <laughs> and he has a new album called Run, Jump, Bop, a, mu a Musical Leap. Let's formally welcome Richard again. Thank you. Sorry, Carol. Yeah, Richard's an old, old colleague and friend. Um, came originally from Spokane, but he, he made his home in Sa uh, Santa Cruz for a long time, and we hooked up maybe 35 years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so uh, we You're thought we'd just, yeah. <laughs> thought we'd jam for you here.
just because I have long gone. No, oh, we've got to find a way to bring some love in here today. You got your picket signs, brother. Your picket Come lines. On, brother. Oh, don't punish me said, with brother. your brutality. And I'm brother. Talk to me, said, you will see what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, yeah. what's going on, tell me, what's going on. What's going on? Thank you so much. Richard Bryant. Mike. Thank you, Richard. That was beautiful. My apologies again. Let's give a welcome to Dr. Carol Carnes. And one of the people who always held that to be possible was Ralph Waldo Emerson. Last year, the publishing company of Divorce uh, asked me if I would write commentary on five of the essays that we use in uh, our teaching. If they're foundational and also we use them in ministerial training because Emerson was uh, such a profound influence on Dr. Ernest Holmes who founded what we now know as um, Science of Mind and is generically new thought. He's one of a few who were in that movement. One of the strongest voices, as a matter of fact. Now he had many influences. He had Jesus, Buddha, Schopenhauer, the scientists of his time, uh, philosophers of ancient times, Aristotle and Plato, but Emerson, really moved him. And this is a direct quote from Holmes. He said, reading Emerson is like drinking water to me. That's quite a statement when you consider how essential water is to life. And it's cleansing, it's healing, and uh, we baptize people in it. So he was referring to something about Emerson's words that did this. And this is my experience that I had with Emerson. Um, the first time I read him was right after I found a religious science center in Kona, Hawaii, where I was living. I had never read Emerson, but I saw this book on the book table, Emerson's Essays, and I picked it up, and I went to the beach. And when I started reading Self-Reliance, one of the, my favorite essays, I was just laughing out loud and deeply touched. And here's the reason. Emerson had a way to quicken the mind while opening the heart at the same time. That's a rare ability for any writer. Quicken the mind and open the heart, sometimes in the same sentence. And that's what I found so astonishing and so delightful sitting on that beautiful beach of on the big island of Hawaii. Now, granted, as I got into the book, and over the years, as I was teaching it and, and, and assisting students in getting a deeper understanding, uh, I admit that there are passages I have to deconstruct. I mean, there can be a whole paragraph that I have to kind of take apart to get at the deeper meaning. But always his point is being made. It might take a little effort, but for the most part, it's just there. This beautiful perception of humanity as open at the top. 
possessing an enormous potential for love and joy, for peace and plenty, and showing us how to do it. And you know, that's probably why Emerson uh, is the most often quoted American, second only to Lincoln. And we know his many big quotes, hitch your wagon to a star, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. <laughs> With consistency, a soul has simply nothing to do. Uh, do your thing, and I shall know you. That got real popular in the 60s. But there are many, too many to mention this morning. But here's what, they, what happened to me when I started reading some of them was, oh, I could have said that, or I wish I had said that. There's kind of um, a familiarity that brings true. When truth is spoken, the mind knows it, right? regardless of how it's framed, flowery flourishes or rap music. If it's there, you can hear it and the mind recognizes it and it feels like it came from you. That's, that's a, a great talent. Um, perhaps his most important influence on Holmes, however, was this. I guess you'd call it his pantheism. Uh, he saw divinity in every living thing. He saw it in rocks and daffodils, and a blade of grass, and a tree, and a chimpanzee, and a moth, and a butterfly. He saw a divinity in every little thing, everything that lives. Now, Holmes kind of evolved that a little bit, because Holmes said, God makes everything out of itself uh, by becoming the thing it makes. But in order to do that, God must be greater than the thing it makes. That's penentheism. And I think that it really is uh, an apt description of our new thought teaching that God is being me, but the aspect of me that I know myself to be is local. I call it the local mind and my awareness of my own I am. I cannot with that local mind be aware of myself as God. If I did, uh, this individualization would probably dissolve. I would cease to be. But I can, however, contact the greater I am through my own local, non-local mind. My non-local mind is my imagination. My non-local mind is what is the vehicle that meditation uses, you might say. My non-local mind is without conditions. And that's what Emerson quoted this in his book. You know, he didn't attribute this. Ernest Holmes used this quote in his book. He didn't attribute it, but they both put, put quotation marks around it. So I don't really know where it came from. I have a feeling it's from the Eastern mystical teachings, but here's what they meant by the non-local mind, my non-local, my local mind using my non-local perception. I, the imperfect, adore my own perfect. Isn't that a beautiful statement? Think about what it means to us. This ego mind, this local self, this Carol, this individual, this woman, this person is not perfect. She has flaws, mostly of the personality type. We all have psychological states of mind that keep us from being fully who we could be. But that self, can adore the perfect Carol, the perfect I am that is being Carol. We, and that's what true worship is. That's what we are meant to do in our inner church, you might say, is to bow down to that greater self, that greater source of all life. So this is what Emerson meant when he said that famous quote, Let's get our bloated nothingness out of the way and allow the divine circuits to come through. Um, what a wonderful way to express that sense that there is something greater than us that is essentially who we are that can come through our personality, come through our words, our choices, everything we do in life, if we get the ego out of the way. Uh, and that's part of the spiritual technology we have ways to do that. And of course, meditation is one of the best. Um, and this is why Holmes said 
we cannot change anything with the same consciousness that created it. Boy, is that a loaded statement in today's world. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. But we cannot enter the higher realm of awareness by dragging the lower realm with us. And Emerson said this about that. Do not import rags and relics into this new hour. This new hour, this new moment, this, this immediacy, this awareness of uh, the great I am. We don't give it a problem to solve because it doesn't understand limitation. Therein lies a huge distinction between spiritual mind treatment and traditional prayer, which I'm going to talk about. Um, we don't take the condition into prayer or treatment, we raise our own mind to perceive a pre-existing wholeness, that field that is our natural state of being. We, we talk to ourselves in a way that takes our attention uh, to a, a place of truth. And when the mind hears the truth, it knows it. A place of awareness that there is no limitation, not in reality with capital R, in speaking of God being us, um, Emerson said in the Oversoul, which is a great essay, a lot of people, it's their favorite. But this is important to us, Re referring back to what I was just talking about. The energy, this energy, meaning the God, infinite power, does not descend into individual life on any other condition than entire possession. Oh, Gosh, I love that. This energy does not descend into individual life on any other condition than entire possession. All of God, right here, right now. Not some of it, not a withholding, not a withdrawing. All of it, right here, right now, in this moment. And that's what we mean when we open up our treatment with some version. And there's many ways to say it, depending on who you, you know, how you perceive reality, but there's many ways to say it, but something like God is everywhere present, all at once, all of it, all the time. The energy does not descend into individual life on any other condition than entire possession. So all of what source is, what God is, is right here, right now where we are. That's every human being on this planet, regardless of what they believe. It is present, all right? The old time metaphysicians used to say, there's no spot where God is not. It's kind of cute, uh, but real, all right? So this is the basis of our teaching. Um, we are implicated in spirit. We are enfolded in spirit. And our human life is an unfolding of that which is enfolded in us. <laughs> Uh, what gives us the individual life is our choice of what to unfold. And that has to do with who we think we are. It has to do with our personal assessment of life. It has to do with our story. So the world of effects, you know, you know, no one says this is easy. It's kind of what we call the razor's edge to be very aware of this absolute truth and live in the relative at the same time. This world is really seductive. And that's fine because there's so much beauty in it and so much pleasure in it and so much fun in it. And we ought to be enjoying this, this time space dimension. And yes, it, it has limitations, but they can be transcended by an awareness of what they really are. They are effects. The limitations we experience in this life are the effects of a cause and the cause is always in the individual mind, which is one with the universal mind, if it wants to connect and make that connection and constantly download the spirit. It's a practice, it's a real practice. Um, Emerson said, it's easy to keep the solitude of one's own mind at home, but it's the great soul that can keep their solitude in the midst of the chaos. Oh, is that ever appropriate right now? I have said to so many people lately, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have this teaching. 
I really don't know. If I if I relied on what I see on the news to describe my reality, I wouldn't want to be here any longer. But I see through it. I judge it righteously as much as I can by seeing a higher arc of evolution happening. Um, see through, you know, in the midst of the crowd or in the midst of the chaos. I just saw this cute, not cute, it's kind of cute because the Dalai Lama is kind of cute. I just saw a thing on Facebook advertising, I think it's June 2nd, you can uh, view by clicking on register. I think it's free. But it's a little uh, film put together by himself and uh, Desmond Tutu. And it's all about joy in troubled times. That is something we all could use right now. Can we hold on to our joy despite the ugliness that we see, despite the violence that's still amongst us, despite all the changes that need to happen? The answer is yes. Holmes knew this, and he developed the practice of speaking into the field with our own voice as if there were nothing to heal, only something to reveal, and that is a practice, and no one said it's easy. There are ways to say to men, meditation, affirmation, spiritual mind treatment, spiritual communities such as this, supporting one another, reading uh, inspiring stories from the great mystics. Uh, there are people on the planet right now, Dr. Matthew Fox is one of my heroes, uh, who has written some incredible book that helped me. I can open up any page and be lifted. I can open open up almost any page of the Science of Mind book and be lifted. And it's important that we take the time to do this. We must take care of our heart right now. We must take care of our mind right now. There's so much garbage coming in and so much of the ashes of the old consciousness floating around, polluting things, right? So one, of, one thing that I love to connect with and to keep tuned in is nature. And so did Emerson. You know, Emerson's church was the woods behind his house. He loved nature. In fact, people say nature is one of his greatest essays. It's not included in my book. By the way, there it is. I'm real proud of that. Um, but nature to him was church. And in his journal, I have this book called Emphatically Emerson. Um, that is a collection of his journal entries. It's priceless. So when he was 34 years old, he wrote this. Come out of your warm angular house, resounding with few voices, into the chill, grand, instantaneous night with such a presence as a full moon in the clouds. And you are struck with poetic wonder. In the instant you leave behind all human relations, wife, mother, child, and live only with the savages, water, air, light, carbon, wine, and granite, I become a moist, cold element. Frogs pipe, waters far off tinkle, dry leaves hiss, grass bends and rustles, and I have died out of the human world and come to feel a strange, cold, aqueous, teraqueous, aerial, ethereal, sympathy and existence. I sow the sun and moon for seeds. You see, that's his mystical side. Here's this brilliant mind, one of the greatest minds I think we've ever had with this mystical heart. His writing really points to his, uh, the yin and yang balance in him, the masculine and feminine, they were both highly developed. In an age when that was rare, but it's always to be found in the great teachers. Bill Little has it, Jesus had it, Buddha had it, Obama had it. The balance of masculine and feminine, which allows them to be able to hear the human quest uh, for joy, for love, for peace, for plenty. Allows them to be able to tap into solutions that are not ordinary, but perhaps very innovative and very creative, which comes from the feminine. So he was poetic about nature, Emerson, 
as much as he was impatient. <laughs> That's what I love about him. He was both, and he was everything. He said, I like man, but not men. I heard a quote the other day. Uh, I don't know who said it. it was a public figure who said, I like men, but not in groups. And Emerson said something about this. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, but how unnatural it was to see a group of men standing with swords at their side. He said, I feel threatened by that. He believed in our higher nature and with all his railing against politics and churches and priests, he never gave up on humanity. He believed in us. Jesus believed in us, Buddha believed in us, all of them, Joseph Campbell, Thomas Berry, Gene Houston, Barbara Mark Sever, all of them believe in us. All of them were attempting to help humanity raise its consciousness. And so Emerson felt there is a spiritual wholeness within each of us. And he said, when it breathes through our intellect, it is genius. When it comes through our affections, it is love. When it moves through our will, it is virtue. Dr. Holmes taught a way to access the greater self, the genius, the original I am as us. He called it spiritual mind treatment. It is often called affirmative prayer, but it really is something else. It's something quite different. It is an ingenious formula to take our attention from whatever the problem may be to the cause back of everything and to reorder our thinking. As if the answer is already alive and on the move by means of us, and it is. So this is effective because consciousness is cause. Our consciousness, our shared consciousness created the God we believe in. Thomas Berry said, we need a new creation story. Um, Last week, I wrote about that. I'm going to read a little bit of what I wrote. I wrote in my living consciously. Just bear with me a little bit because I thought it was pretty good. Um, our story is our script for human behavior. We have cast our species as the victim of sin, as the flawed character in a drama of good versus evil. We have missed the message of the great sages misunderstood them and vilified them. Those who bring the message of our inherent wholeness, our goodness and oneness with source are often crucified, assassinated or ridiculed. Yet the message keeps resurfacing through the millennia. Today it is known as new thought, spirituality and quantum physics. And it's not going away. So, we have reached a tipping point. We must quickly let go of superstition and dogma to see our place in the universe correctly. Emerson and Holmes both intended for us to reach a higher level of self-awareness. That, that was why they did the work they did. They intended for us to reach a higher level of self-awareness and therefore to, to live very differently on the planet, more in accord with nature. Here's one of my, I have so many favorite quotes of Emerson, and you can tell me it moves me. I get verklempt. Quote, the external world exists in us. The same way flight exists in the wing of an eagle before it leaves the egg. What, what would life be like if everybody knew that? If every child was taught that? That's the entire explanation of everything. This last uh, couple of weeks, I've been watching a family of golden eagles across the way. There are some big electrical towers nearby, and they're you know they're like eight stories tall or something. They're very tall, and I noticed this huge nest. Well, from my vantage point, it's way up, and it was still huge. So we started watching it. My friends and I we walked together a couple times a week. And I one day I brought my binoculars and I could see a, 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 what I assumed to be the mother in the nest, her head was kind of bumping up. And then a, a, another golden eagle flew over and sat beside her, not a real big one, but just an average sized golden eagle. 
Okay, that went on for a few days, actually a week. And then one day I was out there by myself and I took my binoculars and I saw the most wonderful thing. The mother was in the nest doing something. And then the small one, one of the eaglets, jumped out and landed on the bar, the steel bar that was part of the structure of this big tower and just sat there. He just like looking around. He wasn't real big. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, like the spaceship in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, this huge, huge golden eagle, I've never seen him before, came in and his wingspan was like six feet or Cross at least, all golden, all golden. And he went over to the mother, he landed on the nest, and they kind of commiserated. And then he hopped over, hopped up to a bar right above the baby, the eagle. And he just stood there. And when he stood up from my vantage point, I could see he was at least three feet tall. This thing was enormous. It's like, I was so, I was so fortunate to see this. And he just sat there and did nothing. But he must have been communicating with that baby because all of a sudden that little eagle took off on his first solo flight. And I, I just applauded. I thought, how fortunate I am to have seen that. That to me is the evidence of God. That proves to me there's a power greater than us that it's in everything it makes, giving it as as uh, Emerson said, it exists in the wing of an eagle before it comes out of the egg. It's already there. Our potential is already here. Our potential for peace and planet, peace and plenty on this planet for everybody is real. It's not utopian. It's real. Okay. So animals live as effortlessly as flowers bloom. They care for one another. They teach each other. They feed each other. They defend their young. And I, I think nature is our greatest classroom if we would only pay attention. Mary Oliver, great poet, when she was 83 years old, she gave this advice to young people. She said, pay attention, be astonished, share your astonishment. And that's how I feel. My life is right now is just constantly sharing this astonishment at this amazing universe we live in, which is our playground. We must create a new creation story. We must write a new script. And we have access to everything that we need to do it. The universe is responsive to us. This is something I've noticed in myself uh, speaking about a lot. It doesn't matter what you call God, it's just a word or even if you believe in it, but this is something that's true. The universe responds to it. There's something responsive in the universe. And now we're knowing that that universe is alive and conscious and it always says yes. And so now I want to do a spiritual mind treatment for all of us. I know some of you are, are and, and it would be entirely understandable, having a hard time right now. Uh, some of it comes from health challenges because of COVID. Maybe some of you are still dealing with it. And it, it, we would be, uh, it would be strange if we weren't somewhat troubled by what we see in the world. So I wanna do a treatment for us and, and uh, we'll begin simply by, if you choose to close your eyes. And we always do what we must do, which is take this local mind, put it in a little vehicle, if you will, and let it float upstream. Let it move away from this room, the chair, the environment, and just simply allow that mind that we are, the I am that we are, to merge with spirit, with God. And we do that by talking to ourselves, by saying, there really is only one power. There is only one life. There's only one presence. There's only one beingness. There's only one consciousness. There's only one source. It is everywhere, all the time, every bit of it, all at once. It never withdraws. It never withholds. It is always coming forth. It is always becoming by means of that which it has already become. This is my power. This is 
And I'm speaking for each and every one of us. This is the source of my body. If health is your challenge right now, know for yourself, my body is a center of God's consciousness of perfect wholeness. If money is your problem, know this. I am always supplied with whatever I need in the moment to fulfill my own highest potential. As Emmett Fox said, money or molecules, it matters not. God can do it. And if we're just troubled by what's going on in the world, just know there is a higher idea coming through each and every one of us. There is immense good happening on this planet right now immense innovation and creativity. It is happening. And so this treatment sets in motion in every one of us a tendency to see through it, to see the truth, a tendency to celebrate, a tendency to allow who we know ourselves to be uh, as spiritual beings to come through no matter what's going on. We choose compassion. We choose love and joy. We choose peace and plenty for all. We forgive and forget, we move on, and we write a new story. And that new story begins with, I am. I am in you, as you, through you, forever available to you. This is the promise of the universe. And we let it take us where we've never been following our heart, paying attention, being astonished and sharing our astonishment. We let it be, we are grateful, and so it is. Peace. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. I just want to mention again that Carroll's book is available uh, in the Mind Shop, and it's also available on Amazon. And also, Carol has a, um, a daily blog called Living Consciously, and it's one of Dr. Bill's favorite. Um, you can go to carol and um, and enjoy her, her daily blog as well. So delighted that she was with us today. Thank you, Carol, if you can still hear me. And I also would like to have uh, our musician come up and sing a song for us. We're not going to forget him this time. I'm so sorry. Come on up, and we'll enjoy a second song from Stephen.
And now it's time for conscious giving. You know my name. Uh, would the ushers please come forward? I don't know your name. Uh, my name is Craig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Time for the offering, which we call Conscious Giving, to give back to our spiritual home. Let's show our gratitude for this wonderful center and community by giving generously. Donation envelopes are provided on the back of each chair. If you're watching on YouTube, please go to our website at csa-pg.org and donate after our program today. Together, let's read the prosperity affirmation. I say yes to the abundant flow of good in my life. I recognize God as the source of my supply. I know that as I give, so too shall I receive. Abundance and prosperity are my divine right, and so it is. The practitioners, ministers at CA, CSA provide face-to-face -face affirmative prayer, or what we call spiritual mind treatment after the program. Please feel free to see me for a prayer treatment regarding anything having to do with finances, health, relationships, or anything that is on your mind or in your heart. I guess I am the practitioner, I'm the practitioner minister today. And uh, I'll be in the meditation room just to the left here. Uh, all treatments are complimentary and provided right after the program. Please wait in the meditation room. I will be right there. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's read the uh, blessing. The divine consciousness that I am is forever expressing its true nature of abundance. I bless the gift that I have just given. It does perfect work. Thank you. If you've never had a prayer treatment by Reverend Craig, do yourself a favor. They're heavenly. <laughs> You know, every Wednesday we have a peace meditation here at noon, and I think Valiana might be in the house. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this peace meditation? Thank you so much. Yes. First of all, thank you to all come. Uh, this is an invitation to let you know that the hour that we spend together is about you. It's about taking the time to yourself to retreat and fill your heart with peace. Yes. And this beautiful group that's been formed 
Thank you. And for those of you at home, if you, if you didn't hear, the Peace Meditation is from noon to one every Wednesday. It's like its own little family, and it's just a gorgeous way to meditate every week, so please come. We also have our Healing uh, Grief Support Group. And I think, Michael, are you here today? Yes. Yeah, Michael, would you just raise your hand so everyone can see you if you have any questions about the Grief Support Group? He's getting an, an applause because it's outstanding. We just, we, we just love this, uh, this support group, and we have a, just a wonderful group that comes, and new people also every week, so please feel free to come. It's a, it's a real non-judgmental healing place to be each week, so please join us. We also have Deb Shepard coming at the end of June. It's June 24th, Friday night, and I think, have any of you been to see Deb Shepard when she's come? Yeah, there's some hands up here. What happens is she gives a gallery reading right here. The, the room kind of fills up with people, and she's a psychic medium and gives messages from the other side, and it is really wonderful, positive and healing and hopeful. I know someone in this room today has gotten a reading from her, and it was just, it's really a life-changing experience. So you can't be guaranteed to get a reading if you come, but, you know, many, of, many people do. So I'd like to invite you to come. The tickets start at $39, and you can see uh, by what's on the monitors here. It's debshepherd.com. That's where you get your tickets, not on our website as usual. If you go to our website, though, there's a link right to Deb Shepherd's um, website. So please come. All right. We have pudding cake today, and we have donuts and <laughs> grapes and coffee and Baileys, and so please... Um, Please, and join us at, please join us afterward in the community room for some refreshments. Your practitioner today is Reverend, I'm sorry, yes, Reverend, <laughs> Reverend Craig Rothen. We have circle group with Dr. Timothy today about Emerson and New Thought. Newcomers, don't forget to get, the, I see Dr. Araya in the, in the doorway right now to give you your gift. So thank you to Dr. Carol. And Richard, wow, just love your voice, love having you here. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Please come back again soon. Thank you to Craig, Jody, Tommy, Araya. Thank you, Michelle, Sylvia, Joanne, Sherry. Oh, Reverend Sherry wasn't here today, but thank you, Sherry. I know you're at home. So hope to see you in the mind. And Colin, thank you, Jordan. <laughs> Let's see you. I hope we can see you in the mind shop today with Marie. So let's stand and sing the peace song. Hey, Carol. I can't even hear you. 